Thank you. I, first, I would like to thank the University of Miami for putting together this economic forum with uh, special thanks to Dr. Manuel Santos and uh, Laurie Goodman for their wonderful presentation. And it is truly an honor uh, to be here as, with you as part of this economic forum panel. I am here at the request of Mr. Gustavo Diaz. He is a business person and an intellect, and someone that for years has looked at the economic downturn of the real estate market and the mortgage crisis, and has tried to arrive at a solution to stop this downward spiral. His efforts have been noble in trying to figure out how to assist the American people in achieve, achieving and maintaining the American dream of owning a home, and nowadays, of making sure they keep it. I became interested in analyzing this with Mr. Diaz because as a certified public accountant, I am constantly being asked to analyze numbers and assist business owners. Even though I deal mainly with businesses, we have been requested over and over again to assist individuals in analyzing their current financial statement, including real estate properties and loan situations. I must say that in the last four years, I've seen personal financial statements go from positive equity to extreme deficits. Based on these decreases, I've seen lines of credits being called and access to loans being decreased. I have been asked on many occasions to assist in reviewing the numbers and have been asked what should one do with their homes? Of course, my first gut reaction is, are you kidding? You have to pay your mortgage. You have to save your home. Where are you gonna go? And then they explained to me, but look at the fair market value of my, of my house. Our neighbors have been foreclosed. The property next door has gone for a short sale. Our house has dropped in value 30 to 40%. We're never going to recover what we put into this house. We need to get out of this and go rent somewhere we can't afford it anymore. And I tell them, ah, it's cash flow. I asked them, have you spoken to your bank? Have you called them? And they say, they tell me there's nothing they can do. We are current with the mortgage and we're not delinquent. Then I asked them, what about the government programs? And for the most part, they tell them they don't qualify. There's nothing they can do. This takes me back to 2007, when for months, Gustavo and I would meet every once in a while and discuss the looming financial crisis. Month after month, Gustavo would predict financial events, some predictable, others not so much. But boy, he was batting a 1,000. In 2008, he focused his change to the real estate bubble and the, imp and the impending mortgage crisis. He expressed his concern to me that individual owners will lose their equity in their homes, their most valuable asset, which would cause homeowners to walk away from their homes, causing a meltdown of the real estate market. Through today, this is exactly what has happened and continues to happen with no clear fix to the problem until now. Oh, well, really not now, because this was developed back in 2008 but has been, hasn't been placed into action until now. In October 2008, Gustavo walks into my office with great excitement. And if any of you know Gustavo, he can get really excited. He says, I got it, I got it. I got a great plan on how to stop the mortgage crisis. The plan, I said, what plan? He goes, the plan. The plan for the American people to not only fulfill the American dream of owning a home, but in making sure they're able to keep it. He proceeded to tell me about his plan and why it would work. It was the 60, or it is the 60-40 plan. The plan would work by, he told me that the plan is gonna work by splitting a mortgage into two parts. The first part, Part A would be based on the current mortgage, on the current market value of the, of the home. In our assumption, I'm gonna use 60%. The second part, Part B, would be an interest accruing deferred balance. 
the deferred balance would be paid at some time in the future when a mortgage owner, when a property owner would either refinance the property or sell the property. At that time, the total principal and accrued interest would be due for that part B. The homeowner's incentive in part and the homeowner's incentive in participating in the plan are numerous. Since Part A of the mortgage is based on the current value, the current monthly mortgage payments would also be based on the current value. By reducing the mortgage payments by an amount in excess of 40%, the homeowner will increase his monthly discretionary spending income by more than 40%. If a homeowner walks away from a home, the homeowner will lose an op any opportunity of a recovery in the real estate market. By deferring the 40% to the future, this will allow the real estate market to recover and home values to come up to their real value, minimizing a negative rating on a homeowner's credit score. If a homeowner walks away from his current home, this will directly affect his credit rating and his ability to obtain additional credit at a reasonable rate and sometime in the future. By incentivizing the homeowner in keeping and maintaining his home under the plan, homeowners are more likely to make payments and keep the loans performing. In addition, a homeowner will be able to use his increase in discretionary income to pay other debts and maintain the homeowner's credit score intact allowing the homeowner to be able to finance durable goods, for example, an automobile, at reasonable rates and contribute to the overall economic recovery. In addition, the homeowner can be assured some long-term cash flow management. If a homeowner walks away from his current home, the homeowner will need to seek alternative housing arrangements. For example, he needs to go out and rent. Rental units are usually leased on a short-term basis, usually one or two years. This will cause uncertainty in future rent payments. Rental payments will increase over the years due to inflation or cost of living expenses, increases. In addition, as rental demand increases, rents will increase as well. A previous homeowner may be paying more in rent in the future than his current mortgage payment. By introducing the 60-40 plan to a homeowner, not only will it decrease the monthly mortgage payment, but it would allow a homeowner to manage his long-term cash flow by maintaining the same monthly payment over the next 30 years. In addition, a homeowner will realize, as a CPA, I'll know this one, in addition, a homeowner will realize income tax benefits, mortgage interests, real estate taxes. These items can be deducted from a homeowner's taxable income. Currently, there are no deductions for rent. Therefore, renting might be more expensive than owning. There are also non-financial concerns that affect a homeowner walking away from his or her home. For example, the stress involved in a foreclosure affects the overall productivity of that person. A foreclosure can lead to families having to split on a temporary basis and begin a transient lifestyle which can affect the workforce and productivity. These transitions can take months or even years. At this point, I would like to present to you an exercise on how the 60-40 plan may work. I will try to keep this basic, knowing that every case may be different. However, the 60-40 plan can work with investment properties, HELOCs, but for this analysis, we'll assume a simple scenario. The numbers are very similar to uh, Dr. Santos' uh, previous um, presentation. I don't have anything from Hotel California or anything like that, so I can't use that. But here, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the, the sample facts. The original home purchase was for $500,000. The original home mortgage, $400,000. The original interest rate, 7%. The year's finance at that time, 30 years. The current fair market value of the property, $240,000.
the current prevailing interest rates, about 5%. The way that the <clears throat> that the way that the modification or, or the 60-40 split would work would be to divide the mortgage, the original mortgage, into two parts. 60% as part A, 40% as part B. So it would be 60% of the original mortgage. The original mortgage, let me go back to this slide here for, for example. I'm sorry. Uh, the original mortgage is at $400,000 at 7% which will, will be a monthly payment of $2,661. That doesn't include the real estate taxes or, or insurance. The modification, the 60-40, 240, and 160. And the 240 is based on a decrease of 40% of, of the original mortgage. Part A, is now $240,000 that's gonna be financed over 30 years at an interest rate of 5%. It'll lower the monthly payment to $1,288. That's part A, 60%. Part B of the mortgage is gonna be the 40% at 4% or a deferred interest of $533. This is not payable monthly but it will be payable at some point in time in the future when the property is refinanced or sold. Just to show you an analysis, a cash flow analysis of how much a homeowner would be saving, the original mortgage payment was $2,661. The modified mortgage payment, $1,288. That's a cash flow savings per month of $1,373. Annual cash savings per year, $16,476. For 30 years, $500,000. The savings, the additional funds can be used to pay debts, maintain credit scores, the funds can also be used to stay current on real estate taxes, reducing a burden on municipal governments for unpaid real estate taxes. It also assures mortgage companies the properties are adequately maintained and insured since there's a vested interest in the property by the owner. There's also benefits to the real estate market. The, it, it could reverse to the real estate market's devaluation it'll slow down the foreclosures. The 60-40 plan will also increase the confidence in the real estate market and equalize supply and demand. Lenders benefit as well. Bank and financial institutions that hold mortgage debts are concerned that in the face of rising default mortgages and falling asset values, it would affect their capitalization. In addition, if mortgages are continually written down or written off, this can lead and become disruptive to the mortgage and real estate industry and could have a downward spiral with such inertia, which can lead to an uncontrollable downturn. However, the plan can halt the write-offs and the write-downs by strengthening capital and by shifting non-performing loans to performing loans while maintaining those performing loans performing. Government assistance. The proprietary mortgage modification method of the 60-40 plan does not require government assistance. However, Governmental incentives will definitely assist in the expansion of the program. For example, the ability to deduct Part B interest will provide incentive to the plan. The plan doesn't increase governmental expenditures, it doesn't use taxpayer funds, and it doesn't create additional debt. Most economists predicted an increase in sales of previously owned homes last month in the U.S., but figures fell instead. 
According to the National Association of Realtors, sales of existing homes have dropped 2.6%. Economist and Christine Lagarde, Managing Director of the Inter International Monetary Fund, have warned world leaders not to become complacent about the shaky global economic recovery. Many of the challenges that tripped up the recovery in 2010 and 2011 are back, such as rising layoffs, falling home sales, and slowing manufacturing activity in the U.S., and debt woes in Europe. The interest rates now are at historical low rates. However, cheap credit alone can't fix the real estate and mortgage crisis. For this reason, now is the optimal time for the 60-40 plan. By reducing mortgage payments and adding discretionary spending income to homeowners, the plan can put forward a mortgage restructuring solution that will reestablish a vigorous real estate market and mortgage lending industry, as well as contribute to the overall economic recovery. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for coming, and let me thank again Carlos and Lori for uh, coming. So thank you very much. Thank you.